Do you have questions about qualifying for a mortgage? Uh, keep watching this video while I talk to Bobby Andrus about some common myths and um, what the reality is when it comes to qualifying for a mortgage. Hi, my name is Jennifer Canepoli and I sell residential real estate in Destin, Florida with Taylor Allen Properties. Um, this is the last video as part of the first time home buyer's guide and qualifying for a mortgage. And I talked to Bobby Andrus again, and we cover myths, reality, and we do touch base on one of the better types of homes for the first time home buyers. Keep watching. Hi, um, we are I'm back with Bobby Andrus hey. from University of Lending. Um, we are wrapping up our first time home buyer's guide and qualifying for a mortgage. Um, today we are going to talk about overall qualifying for a mortgage and dispelling common myths. Um, so I think the first thing I'd like to talk about is um, qualifying for a mortgage with a new job. Right. So I get this question quite a bit. I had a friend call me up yesterday actually about it saying that, you know, he had been in a job where he had received commission for a number of years, and now he's going to be in a job where it's just straight salary. And in that case, I mean, that's perfect. For us, that's all we're looking forward to is so long as you have a base salary that is on paper, it's going to continue into the future for the foreseeable future. There's no end to it. That continuity of income is really what we're looking for. Where it kind of gets tricky is if you switch into a job with variable types of income. So that's your commissions jobs, that's jobs where you're trying to count bonus income on top of like your hour, hourly or your salary. That might require a few more, a year, maybe two years, depending on the situation, your history in the industry, in order for us to develop a good picture of how much to be able to count towards qualifying you going into the future. I would fall into that category. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. So, especially in this area, a lot of people are self-employed. So, yes. how do you qualify for a loan as a self-employed person? Which I know you kind of touched on that a little bit, but let's like, what are, what's the best way to do that? Short and skinny is that you're working with the federal government to some degree. You got to pay to play. You, can, you unfortunately have to pay some amount of taxes, or you have to claim a certain amount of income on your taxes. I'm not going to. I'm not a CPA. I'm not going to tell you exactly what to claim, what to write off in order to hit the numbers that we need to average out for one year or two years to help you qualify. The biggest mistake, I wouldn't necessarily call it a mistake, your self-employed individual is gonna to go to their CPA, their CPA is gonna itemize all of the deductions that they're legally, or they can legally take, and I mean, by all means, write them off. Where that hurts is on the back end, sometimes you write off too much, so right. on paper, it doesn't show like, you make enough money to qualify for a loan based on the rule that we have to go by. Right. So you need a paper trail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you need to be claiming enough money. Correct, correct. There, I mean, in better times, there are certain programs that maybe um, some banks will lend out based on bank statements. Um, they also do what's called like a stated income loan, which is also kind of a bank statement loan. But in times do, of recession, do lenders do a lot of stated income loans anymore? Because I know that used to be a thing. Not right now, just because of the recessionary concerns and the amount of risk the banks are, are now kind of exposed to. Those have dried up for the most part until the powers that be decide that you know they're not so risky anymore. But they, they do fall into the tier of being a higher risk loan because you don't have all this paper trail right. to support a particular income. I would think that's on. risky no matter what. To just if, have a stated income. I, I think that's what happened in the last uh, <laughs> downturn, but hey, power smarter than I have made better decisions. Um, Bobby, what is a smart number for the month, the average monthly um, mortgage payment for the typical first time home buyer? Correct. And a good number or a good rule of thumb to go by is probably a third of what your gross monthly income is. Okay. And then that way, you know. You have some wiggle room built in for if an emergency should happen, and it also allows you to accumulate some degree of savings, just depending on what your, your spending habits are in general. But I would say, at max, a third of what your gross monthly income is, the lesser, the better. I mean, just depends on what you're comfortable with. That doesn't mean that we can't qualify you if you're 
home payment or mortgage payment is greater than the third, we certainly can. But I mean, just practical advice, that should be a good rule of thumb. Okay. And then first time home buyers, um, what type of house should they buy? Um, you know, if I had any advice for someone, I would steer them. Steer is a bad word. So, <laughs> you yeah, can say that. <laughs> let's not use that word in there. So let's Steering reframe anybody. that. Yeah. So let's start over. In terms of the property type that I would advise somebody to look at, look for if they were a first time home buyer, is something more along the lines of, of a new build. I mean, that way you know that. A new build. Yeah, you know that. A lot of things are under warranty. A lot of your appliances are under warranty. This is so true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's builder's warranties that will cover a lot of defects, should there be any defects. And also with the marketability of the home going into the future, figure the average American family really only holds onto a home around an average of seven years. Seven years, yeah. So inside that seven years, you still have a very new home. It's still updated in terms of what the modern appliances are, the modern styles are. The marketability is just overall greater. Okay. So purchasing a new home for a first time home buyer, like Bobby says, you go into it, you don't have to make repairs or updates, I should say. Um, you walk into the home, there's a lot of new development in Destin, Florida, um, and there's development of all in all price brackets. You walk in, you don't have to make any upgrades, you, you gain a little equity in your home, you go to sell it to move into your next home, and it's gonna be, I mean, it should be an easier sell for you it's kind of what i mean yeah exactly unless you're just really well versed in construction or renovation right. itself if and that's you can find a real good deal but i mean for the average joe that's probably something that i would advise looking into the newer the better okay awesome um so this video kind of wraps it up for our um, first time home buyers guide and qualifying for a mortgage um, we have talked about um, your credit score, we have talked about down payment, um, we've talked about uh, PMI, which is, help me out. Protects the lender. Protects the lender. The reason why, I mean, it's in existence. Unfortunately, it's something you have to deal with. But right. It allows you to get the house, the most important part. Yes. Um, we have talked about down payment assistance programs today. We have kind of quickly covered overall qualifying for a mortgage, whether you have a new job, whether you are self-employed. Um, we have answered so many questions throughout this series. Um, so please watch the videos. And if you have questions about lending or mortgage, call Bobby or call me. I'll get you in touch with Bobby. Um, but I really enjoyed this. Of course. Um, and thanks for coming out again. And thank you for having me. Yeah. We'll see you soon. See you guys. Thanks again, Bobby. Um, it was so awesome doing this series with you for first time home buyers. Um, I have a question for all you first time home buyers out there. Uh, Bobby talked about new construction and kind of a light bulb went off in my head as to why that might be one of the better homes for you to buy. Um, but I'm curious, um, if you're a first time home buyer or second home buyer or whatever, are you gonna go in for a fixer upper or are you gonna to steer to that um, uh, new construction? I'd love to know, let me know in the comments. Um, like the video, share the video, subscribe to our channel. Um, still coming back every Wednesday um, with information for you in real estate and Dustin, Florida. Thanks so much, bye.